My name is Conchita Henry and I live with my husband Balford and my daughter Sharda who's 14 going on 40 and my son Akil who's just turned 12. I love sports, um, I love to watch it, um, better still to do it but I don't get much time. I do like to spend time alone but I'm not really a loner. And so to me, um, fellowship with others is really, really important, particularly on something that I think is so essential to my life, which is spirituality. So to be able to meet with a group of people and discuss with them the things that are always going around in my head and the things that I sometimes have to talk with my children about because they ask me a lot of questions about things to do with the spiritual life is really important for me because it helps me to um, step back from my busy life and really engage with the bits of me that I think are really important to put right. And so I will really enjoy that time of reflection um, to rethink what, what I believe and to, um, to modify it and to come up with something that I think will make me more satisfied and clearer and, and more content with myself, because that's what life's about, isn't it? Contentment and peace. And I think that would be really good. We're calling the journey Mind the Gap. It's a journey of conversations in a small group setting right here. Conversations about big gaps in life. Gaps between reality and the way we experience life. And this gap today, I keep saying this, every one seems to be a big one, but this one is huge for the 21st century. All right, 21st century. I'm gonna read a story. Straight out of Reuters News Agency. Listen to this. This happened just a few weeks ago in the city where I was born. Dave, did you know that I was born in Tokyo, Japan? You did not know that, did you? I'm letting you know that now. This is a Dateline Tokyo. The pajama-clad skeleton of a man, a Japanese man, has been found in a vacant apartment building. What's the big deal? Listen on. The skeleton was discovered lying atop musty futon. They have these, you know, futons. All right. This, this, this bedding earlier this month when workers getting ready to raise, that means take it down, the derelict building entered the second floor unit where the man had lived, domestic media reports said on Thursday. Police believe the man, an employee of the construction firm that built the apartments, moved in after the building was vacated when the firm managing it went bankrupt. The man... <laughs> Divorced and with children, suddenly stopped coming to work, but none of his relatives ever asked police to search for him. Now listen to this, guys. Listen to this. They found a newspaper on the kitchen table dated February 20, 1984. It, it just, it just, you say, it cannot be true. 20 years, the man has been missing, and his relatives never contacted the police, saying, have you seen him? And the people at work didn't say, hey, where's Joe? Because that's not a Japanese name. Where is Joe? He hasn't come in for 20 years. I mean, you can't believe it. But guys, I, I share the story with you. It's such, a, it's such bizarre, so bizarre in its nature. I share it with you because it highlights the critical gap that we must contemplate today and get a conversation going on, and that's a gap of community. If that man had belonged to something, mm -hmm. somebody would surely have said, Joe hasn't, it's been a week. Mm -hmm. Anybody seen Joe? Mm -hmm. But nobody misses him. Yeah. 20 years and he's in his pajamas. What a sad, sad wow. story. Sad. The issue of community, <laughs> however, and here comes the kind of the edge, the issue of community, however, when you mention it in the context of Christianity, also raises the issue of church. Mm. Oh my, church, community, and now here goes the bad news. And in fact, Althea, let's just cut to the chase. Let's be brave yes. and put it on the screen of our minds, heard on the pavement. Here the just today, yeah. fresh in. What people are saying about the church. Well, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you have to go to church, does it? Don't like going to church. Fair enough. Why do I have to be part of a church? The other big question is that a lot of people think that the church is a little bit hypocritical. It's full of people who say one thing and do another. Mm. 
and history seems to show that there are fewer and fewer people going to church nowadays anyway. You could probably make that point, certainly in the West, certainly yes. in the West. Uh, and a, a group of people are, are asking, what is so special about church anyway? It's nice to be uh, a part of a community, and mm. most people think that that's mm. kind of mm. essential. But um, what's wrong with just belonging to my local community club, my women's institute, the mm. health club, the sports club? What's, what's wrong with that? Okay. Why do I have to be it's part a of a question. church? It's a fair question. Hmm. Uh, the other question, this is kind of a big issue, I think, for most of the people that we spoke to, um, is that they feel that churches tend to want to churn out people who are so alike. They look like each other, they talk like each other, mm. they walk like each other, they wear the same kind of clothes as mm. each other, you know, a little bit clone-like. Mm. Um, and really, they don't want to be that Who wants to be similar. a part of something where it's yeah. cookie cutter, cookie cutter, everybody same, yeah, same, 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 same. And, and you, know, you know, they do one thing, they say one thing, and do another. Mm. Back to the hypocrite issue. Yeah, Is there absolutely. anything more? Uh, yeah, there's Maybe another one, one about um, <laughs> a lot of churches seem to, or religious organizations are run by committees, which go on to another committee to talk about money and it's all about the leaders. You know, there's this hierarchical mm, system, mm, you know, mm. and everybody's reaching after power and it's a big power struggle. Okay. I don't like right. that. Okay. Mm. Mm. This is, this is going to be a, uh, a, a lively conversation because yeah. we need to face, uh, those, those are critical questions. Uh, before we tackle them, let me just ask you this. We're, we are in a land of clubbing and pubbing, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pubbing yeah. on Friday nights, clubbing on Saturday nights. How critical in the 21st century, how critical is community for us as human beings? How critical? It's vital. Mm. We need it. It's vital. We, need, yeah. we, we need people. We crave it. No one can survive on their own. Mm. We all either go to work, to church, to school, to, to our job. No one exists mm. on their own. Yeah. And yet the case has been made for uh, postmodern uh, uh, and the secular West that we are becoming more and more uh, resorting to individualization. In other words, we're, we're, we're shrinking mm -hmm. the circles in which we live. So mm -hmm. that I can do it all on the internet, I can do it all, mm -hmm. you know, with a microwave and an internet, you can pretty much live alone, <laughs> right? Yeah. And that's what's happening. Yeah. Yeah, we're in danger of that because of the way that the world is developing in terms of uh, technology. Mm -hmm. uh, but in terms of what you need personally on a human level, mm -hmm. I think that's a whole. Okay, fire, fire issue. at me then. Uh, okay, fire at me where it is you can find community. Give me the places you can find community. Well, in England, it's the pub. Mm -hmm. The pub, okay, I we, mean, we've established that. If you don't go that. to the pub at lunchtime or after pub, work, yeah. well, you I don't love the community. names of the pubs. Yes. I don't know where you came up with the these. The horse and the bull, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. What's a horse okay. and a bull? So the pubs, I'll accept that. What else? Where do you go to? Where does? It, where do we go? Football to clubs. Football sport, clubs. Football stadium. Yeah. 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 Now, when you say football clubs, what are you talking about, Darren? Well, I mean, you can have your local football club. Yes. You go down to Reading. Okay. Very good football team. All right. Uh, and there, there, <laughs> you, you, you watch maybe every weekend a good game. Yeah. You know, you're you're coming together with your friends. Right. You're supporting the same team. Okay. Wearing the same colors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's mm. okay. Pubs. Clubs. What else? Give me, give me some more uh, community areas where community yeah. is well, the, the natural built. family. The natural the na family. Oh, yeah. yeah. Home. Home. Yeah. Home. All Mom, right. dad, kids. You know, that's uh, that's what being. In fact, it, in fact, it said that you it's know, if children don't block. have that sense of community, some right. children can die mm. if they don't have contact. Yeah. So that's a very good system. point. Yeah. Good point. Any, anything else? Uh, other ways that you build community, you, you experience community? Well, workplace, schools, workplace. Yeah. Eating, yeah. eating together. Yeah. yeah restaurants. Hey, wait a minute. Who, who's, who was the one that was into uh, uh, go-karting? Yes. Was that you, Darren? Yes, that okay. is definitely me. <laughs> you mean you meet your chaps there? I meet friends. Um, sometimes I organize a few guys to get together, go, go down to Reading again to go go-karting. Um, may I just say I won the trophy the last time? <laughs> oh, you are the first place. I have the trophy in my bedroom. Formula One so, champ, right here. Yeah, well, there. out of 20 at least, anyways. Okay, but so. It's a good time together. And when you're together mm. in whatever these activities are, 
What's happening? Why, why, why is community happening? What is it that you want to see happen when you Same experience interest. community? Same yeah. interest. Same interest, okay. You belong. You belong. You belong. You belong. Sense of belonging. You sense of belonging. Sense of belonging. You're interacting. You're accepted. Yeah. 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 Accepted. Yeah. Yeah. You're interacting. You're, interacting. you're sharing. Yeah. You're okay. learning. And yeah. you feel secure and safe, both. don't you, mm. in the community yeah. that you've chosen. It's a caring, mm. nurturing thing going on here. Mm. Mm. So why does the church get such a bum rap? Why do so many people find it distasteful? I think a lot of people don't find community in churches. You know, people go along. They're not experiencing the similar interests, oh, well, interaction. Maybe they're not. You know, mm, a lot belonging. of people that I know, you mm. know, see churches irrelevant. They see churches boring. That doesn't, mm. you know, they go there, some guys up the front droning about something they can't relate to, mm. you know, and, and maybe the church hasn't adjusted so well to our culture. I, I, I don't yeah. know. And I think as well for, for y younger people, mm. uh, they probably find that an issue because some churches predominantly are filled with older people yeah. mm. so they don't mm. seem to have so much of a connection they yeah. feel isolated okay. and it's not there's nothing going on yeah. that probably meets their and, needs and often yeah. you know the people in churches are not always as, as maybe welcoming as they could be mm -hmm. you know I know of, of people Craig was just telling me earlier you know he got kicked out of a church once for not wearing the right clothes mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know people are critical yeah, yeah. you walk in you feel uh, uh, the eyes of criticism and also people who've been part of a church community um, can withdraw from that because they've had a bad experience okay. you know, people have been yeah. not very nice to mm. them and they think I'm not going there again mm. because the church isn't really like you know, your gold karting club, is it? Mm. I mean, in the sense that mm. there are ideals here expectations. That are, and expectations which are mm. far and way above the mm. pub and anywhere else you go. That's, that's mm. And so point. you go in kind of point. with a different yeah. feeling. Yeah. Sometimes church tends to hang on to tradition, which is, uh, you know, very, very old indeed. And it's not yeah. necessarily relevant in to today's society. Times, and yeah. Yeah. Archaic, yeah. Kings in, Queen's so English, yeah. Yeah. conformity. These and thous. Althea, you were telling me you have a friend. Christian, a friend who says she's a Christian, but hey, forget the uh, church. Well, you know, she she is a Christian. She she has very, I would say, strong Christian values and mm -hmm. principles. Uh, she just does not feel the need to belong to a church or go to a church on a regular basis. She, and she is. She's a wonderful person. Very warm. Very friendly. She will do anything for anyone. Mm. Uh, looks after other people's children and. You know, we'll cook a meal if someone's moving house mm. and get them all set up. She's a really lovely person. Mm. Doesn't go to church. Just no need, no interest. Doesn't find yeah. mm. anything there for her. And Darren, you were telling me, yeah. you, somebody came over to you, your, your, where well, you live. Where I work, where I work. Yeah. yeah. Um, I'm a maintenance guy. Mm. Also as a piece of delivery. Mm. And uh, <laughs> this guy was uh, getting rid of some cockroaches. Excellent guy, really, really friendly guy, you know. Dead on Christian, mm. okay, he was a Christian, but he didn't go to church because he, he felt they were hypocrites. Mm. They're like hypocrites. He, he couldn't feel also like like the formalities, you know, mm. there's too many formalities, mm. not enough relaxing and singing mm. prayer songs. Ireland. Aye, yeah, that's what he used with me. We were talking about, in Ireland, okay, you have the Protestants and the Catholics, mm. as it were, two different religions, but what is it really? It's people underneath using that as an excuse mm. to fight, you know, religion as an excuse. Mm. But that's a, that's so a that, good mm. issue because a lot of people use that um, analogy of, of what's happen, happening with the Protestants and the Catholics in Ireland mm. as, as a reason why they do not want to entertain going to yeah. church because mm. it is so hypocritical mm. to yeah. religious factions yeah. at each other's and, and, and guys, so. we're not talking about unjust charges, are we? No. I mean, did somebody no, didn't really. make up the Ireland conflict, North no. and, uh, yeah. and uh, Northern Ireland and Ireland, mm -hmm. the Protestant Catholic. Mm. That's there. It's in the news. Mm -hmm. You can't just say, well, that's not really... It's a huge deal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people, they're not, they're not just uh, spinning, uh, spinning their wheels when they come up with these charges. Um, you almost get the feel... Uh, I'm, you know, if you remember growing up as kids, mom would come and say, this medicine is awful, tastes awful. <laughs> but she says, listen, boy, swallow it because it's going to be good for you. Mm -hmm. And, and you, you th man, is that the church? It's awful. I hate being there, but it's good for me, so I got to just uh, take it whether it kills me or not. Mm. See? Mm. I mean, is that what we're going to end up with? Yeah. 
Let me read some, uh, Althea, from the uh, Heard on the Street uh, comments that you were quoting a moment ago. Here's one. I agree that being a part of a community is essential for us, but who says that it has to be an organized religious community? Mm -hmm. Now, I've heard people use that line before, and my immediate response is, what would you prefer? Would you prefer disorganized religion? Yeah. You know, so hey, I'm not too, the, the organized, it's like it's a, is, is, is that no. the charge? No, that's not the charge, actually. Yeah. You can get support and friendship and love and help from a variety of community groups, but what is so special about a church? Yeah. Mm. Heard on the street. Yeah. Mm. Mm. In order to give some uh, objective content to our very subjective uh, uh, conversation, let me put some pieces out. Let's put them out on the table again. Mm. I want to put four lines from this ancient book. Pull your Bible out, please. And uh, let, let's read these. Those of you uh, watching right now, what we're going to do is we're going to go to that book called uh, Scripture, Holy Scripture, and we're going to examine what it says about church. Now, this is the ideal. And we've had another conversation, by the way, about the relevancy of the Bible in the 21st century. And if you're watching Mind the Gap for the first time, I hope you get into the cycle because it's a cycle of conversations. Uh, but let's put these four... four Ideals, okay? Church is supposed to be. I understand we don't measure up. But let's go with uh, Conchita. Uh, Philippians. Read for us, please. Philippians 2. Imagine now, guys, a community where this is the operative ideal and principle. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Can you imagine the U.S. Congress and Westminster Parliament if those two great institutions operated with that principle? Mm -hmm. Consider others better than yourself. Look out for the interests of others mm -hmm. first. Mm -hmm. There aren't a whole lot of communities out there that live by that mm -hmm. rule, so. Conchita, but that is to be the church, mm -hmm. a place where people are looking out, not for yeah. number one, yeah. but for everyone mm -hmm. else around them. Mm -hmm. mm. Let's put that one on the table, mm -hmm. right there on the top. Let's go to uh, number two, and uh, Lonnie, that would be you. The, Jesus speaking just before the crucifixion the next day, John 13. Um, Verse 34. John 13, 34, yeah, and 35. Yeah, sorry. Uh, a new command I give to you. Love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, all men will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. I mean, it said three times there as yeah. if they didn't get it the yeah. first time, yeah. you know. Mm -hmm. that, it's really, really critical. It's that about these, loving. Yeah, they have mm -hmm. to love one another. Now, it's, I know a little bit about football. Mm -hmm. I know the football we have on our side of the uh, pond <laughs> and the football you have over here. And I've heard the word hooligan. Mm -hmm. And I know that there are some communities <laughs> where you experience community, but it's not a whole lot of loving going on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. It's right. Yeah. Yeah. when we talk about football here because that, that element does come up and it doesn't give you that feeling of love, love and yeah. share <laughs> and care. But the idea. Yeah. Okay, look, at has the church failed there? Oh, my. Can we mm. think of churches that have not loved one another? Yeah. A dime a dozen, probably. Mm -hmm. But the ideal is, number one, think of other people's interests before yourself. Number two, love one another. Althea, let's do uh, 1 John 3. This is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Mm. If anyone has material possessions and sees his brother in need but has no pity on him, how can the love of God be in him? Dear children, let us not love with words or tongue, but with actions mm. in mm. truth. Wow, what an ideal. Mm. Nobody's going to be hungry in this community. Mm. People, the, the needy are being provided for. Yeah. Love one another. Lay down your life for yeah, one you another. That, that's, that's pretty well, radical right? stuff, yeah. guys. Pretty yes. radical. But that's the ideal. Mm -hmm. Now, remember, this is the church that Jesus built. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, let's put one more piece in. Darren, are you the fourth mm -hmm. piece? Yes, you are. Yes, Matthew 23, Matthew please. 23, verse 11. You can please. The greatest among you will be your servant. Mm. Mm. One line. The greatest <laughs> among you be your the servant. Mm. Guys, why can't we live by these? I mean, heard on the street, mm. they're, they're making a fair point. You mm. guys don't live up. You don't practice what you preach. Mm. What's the problem with that? Well, because who wants to be involved with something like that if, you know, someone says 
Well, yes, we should love one another. And then the next minute in the school playground, then... Yeah, but my you know, question is, why aren't we living it? Now, I'm not worried about but, what they're saying out there. Why aren't we living it? Because yeah, don't you say I, that you're a part well, of Christianity? Yeah, I, I am. Yeah. Well, I mean, everybody tries, and everybody really... Yeah. I think most of us mm. try to work at living up to that ideal. Mm. And sometimes we fail. Yeah. And we have to admit that and hold our hands up and say, yes, we failed. We don't mm -hmm. actually do that mm -hmm. all of the time. And mm -hmm. I could not sit here and say, oh, well, yeah, you know, I'm as really nice as pie to all of you every yeah. single time I see you or whatever. Yeah. But, so we're um, dealing with basic human nature. We had a conversation, by the way, about human nature, didn't we? Right. We are. Yeah. We're not a community of perfect people. No. no. We're a community yeah. of imperfect people. Mm -hmm. I think that the tragedy is that some of us do think we're perfect. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and therefore, that's probably the key, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. When, we think, when we purport to be something other than mm -hmm. we actually that's right. are, and therefore mm. people feel upset mm. when, people, when that doesn't come down. through. But you yeah. have to remember, this, this, is, this, this is the ideal. Uh, the church has presented, and you've right. the scriptures that mm. you've presented mm -hmm. present the ideal. Mm -hmm. And it also invites anybody and everybody to accept this ideal. But we don't get there immediately. Mm -hmm. I mean, in fact, it, it, it's like a hospital. The hospital is there to try and cure, but inside that so hospital... So the church is not so a museum for perfect people? No. Yeah. What is it? Absolutely. A hospital for imperfect for people. For imperfect yeah. people. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I mean, we had a conversation about human nature, yeah. and how many of the human race did we finally conclude is pretty much struggling at the very core of yeah. existence? Yeah. How many? Pretty much everyone. Oh. Everybody. Yeah, pretty much yeah. everyone. Six yeah. point whatever billion today. Even when, yeah. if, even if there's a good person, you yeah. know, I've just bought the. Um, Biography of Mother Teresa. Oh, did and, you? And on the on, on the on the back, I haven't read it yet. Mm. It, it says, you know, she was not a perfect person, yet the world sees her as mm. that. And mm -hmm. I'm I'm reading it, going to read it with interest because mm. sure. there'll be things to show you that actually she was still a human mm. being. Mm. She had some very good things about her. Mm. But you know, she there are things mistake. also. Well, Princess that's Diana right. is the case in point, isn't she? Just the same. Yeah. She was not perfect by any stretch of the yeah. imagination, and yet when she died. The whole country was yeah. completely consumed with her, mm. uh, her goodness. Yeah. yeah. Well, with with her this feeling of and, yeah, how mm, good she yeah. was. She went to see a few um, countries that had landmines, mm. and she she was good and kind to children. But we this outpouring of grief was mm. just amazing mm. because of this one woman so who. Is it, so is it that we don't see any of those good family? things in the church? Why people have this perception of the church mm. as being somewhere they, they don't want to be. Mm. I think it's because of the expectation. Higher yeah. expectations yes. for the community of yes. faith than for the general community. Yeah. yeah. Mm. We, we often... Is that fair? Yeah. Is that fair, David? Higher expectations? Yes, I think so. In what way? I, uh, Conchita, what way? Why is it fair? Because that's what... I mean, if you go to a tennis club, they have their rules. They mm -hmm. say you come in with, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. smart dress or whatever. Gear. You expect that. And if you go in with somebody looking scruffy, you think, I'm not going back to a tennis mm -hmm. club. What's it about? Mm -hmm. So if you go to a church and they purport to have these high ideals, as mm -hmm. we've just read, this is what they'll be reading. Mm -hmm. Love one another, think of other better than yourself. Mm -hmm. And you go in and somebody looks at you and says, oh, my gosh, what are you wearing today? Or look at her. <laughs> then you think, what's this place about then? Yeah. This is no yeah. better than my tennis yeah. club. Let me yeah. go back to that. Yeah. So it is reasonable. Hmm. for them to expect that. Well, here's hmm. another one. Here, 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 heard on the street. Jesus seemed to live his life accepting people just as they were, but Christian churches these days seem to do the opposite. They seem to want to produce clones, not individuals acceptable. The rules and regulations of individual churches seem to become more important than the actual principles. Mm. Who changed Jesus' principle of acceptance to judgment? Mm. Why would I want to join a group of people who teach one thing, yet do another? Mm. You think... know what I want to say? I want to, while I still have the floor here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, boy, I tell you. <laughs> to you, we're ready to go. But let me just, well, I still have this breath left. Uh, I want to say to the people watching right now, because there's, there's some who are saying, yeah, right on, right on. Z that's it. You know what? I stand guilty as charged. I think of the way I have behaved in the church. I think of the people I have snubbed, people who didn't think like me or act like me or look like me, people that I have just said, hey, I don't have time. That you, you have made, sir, or was this a ma'am? I don't know. But you have made your point well. And I'd like to apologize, really. I would like to apologize mm -hmm. for the way the Christian church has treated people on this earth. Mm -hmm. You know? I don't want to sound like a school marm, but uh, mm. we ought to be ashamed mm. sometimes, mm. right? I mean, we haven't done it right. And we know the bad experiences. In fact, <laughs> if I went around this circle say, and said, Conchita, Lonnie, Althea, Darren, Craig, David, 
Give me all the bad experiences you know. We wouldn't have time to get this conversation <laughs> wrapped up. Mm. But I don't want to focus. I don't want to focus on the negative. I know that it's out there, and I, I, I am sorry for the way Christians have behaved, and I'm one of them. I want to flip that around, though. Has the church done anything good? Does the community of faith do good things in the 21st century? Absolutely. But let's just put a little bit of that up there as well. I mean, I know the backbiting. I know the hypocrisy. I know the judgmental spirit, the better, holier-than-thou attitude. What, what good comes out of a community of faith? You just have to look at... Uh all the organizations that have come out and made valuable contributions to society, from the Salvation Army to Oxfam, they've all got that, that church foundation. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. And by the way, the Salvation Army got its start in London. That's right. right. In the inner city of London. Mm -hmm. William Booth, wasn't that his That's name? Yeah. Yeah. William Booth started yeah. right over here and raised up this massive global network mm -hmm. of compassion and mercy and care. Mm -hmm. Thanks for that illustration. Even the Samaritans, that a lot of people use nowadays, you know, mm -hmm. they're the upset. The where do you, where the mm -hmm. place you think about is mm -hmm. the Samaritans. Mm. to go and get help. Yeah. Mm. Mm. It's Christian base, isn't it? Think of the hospitals. Are there hospitals yeah. on earth? Althea, you are there a are medical person. And schools and other places where you can get, you know, that sort of help in acute times uh, that churches have been responsible for. And, you know, all across the world, uh, Christian organizations do this kind of work. So yeah. th there is a lot of good. And these things speak and to the mission of the church. You know, it's a service. Yes. You know, these are services that we offer globally. Any of you as a young adult go overseas, go somewhere away from your home to mm. serve for a year? Yeah, I, I think that... That is one of the central experiences of my life that really Where'd you go, Craig? solidified my faith. Um, I went to Romania. Okay. Uh, what Romania, happened over there? What'd you do there? Romania, Romania has a horrible problem with orphans. Mm, um, I've heard. Babies being left on doorsteps in mm. garbage cans. And what uh, we did as a Christian organization is we went over there and we built an orphanage. We upgraded their orphanage. We gave the workers in the orphanage some relief time, took care of the babies. And there's, there's something to be said for you know, holding a baby and looking at a baby who oh, has bet. been left in a garbage can mm. and mm. abandoned by a, a, a drug addict mother. I mean, it, it's just an experience that, that fills you right up to the rim. Wow. One of these questions suggested, I'll say that you read a moment ago, heard on the street, uh, Jesus just came to teach us love and acceptance. He did not organize a church. And I need to challenge that question because it really is based on a misunderstanding and actually an no understanding of, in fact, what Christ did. He mm. did raise up a church. Lonnie, mm. I wish you'd, I wish you'd read yeah, a line Matthew chapter from Scripture. twenty-eight, um, verses nineteen and twenty. It's the very last words that Jesus said. In fact, it's the, the very last two, two verses of, of the entire book. Mm -hmm. uh, Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the very end of the age. So this community of faith was organized for service. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not a place where you just sit back in this cool cathedral and, and engage in um, you know, some sort of spiritual introspection. As important as introspection is, know mm -hmm. thyself. That came from William oh, yeah. Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. But spiritual navel-gazing eventually becomes a vicious circle and just takes us out of society. Mm -hmm. Here Jesus is saying, go into all of society, go into yeah. the whole world. Yeah. On, on my behalf. Yeah. Uh, Dave, another fascinating line of his. Let's put that on the table as well. The Gospel of St. John, chapter 14, the night before he dies. Notice that statement. That's verse 12, I believe. Verse 12. It says, I, it says, I tell you the truth. Anyone who has faith in me will do what I have been doing. He will do even greater things than these because I'm going to the Father. Mm. So all this healing and, and uh, teaching. Yep making a difference, connecting with the human race, I want you to do even more. Mm. I, I didn't get a hospital started, I couldn't, but I want you to do even more. Yeah. Mm. Organize for service. Mm. Uh, do you have your Bibles? I want you all to look this one up. And those of you who are watching on television right now, I want to go to a passage, St. Paul, the great, uh, probably the greatest Christian who ever lived. Paul wrote this. It's a, it's a, a rather creative metaphor for the community of faith. And so let me, uh, let me read this. Uh, this would be uh, 1 Corinthians. In the New Testament, there were Christians that were in the city of Corinth, Athens, and the Greek Olympics, of course, have put uh, Greece once again on uh, the world's radar screen. So that's the same country. 
This is to, the, to a group of Christians now uh, forming a community of faith, church, if you want to call it church, uh, in Corinth. This is uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let me pick it up, uh, drop down to verse 12. And here's, here's, the, here's the parable. The body, speaking of the human body, is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts, and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body, whether you are Jew or Greek, we would say, whether you are from the east or the west, the north or the south, uh, whether you are slave or free. Thankfully, we don't live with those categories as much, although there are countries of earth that still do. We were all given the spirit to drink. Okay, one body. Now, here, here it comes, verse 14. Now, the body is not made up of one part. Have you ever seen a body that is only a nose? <laughs> I've seen some noses, by the way, that stand out as if that were the only feature. <laughs> but that's not the point. Have you ever seen a body that's only a nose? No, 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 no. If the foot should say, because I am not a hand, I do not belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body, would it? Mm -hmm. The foot could say, you know, I'm really tired of being down here in the dirt. But if the, and if the hand says, I'm up here in the sky, I don't need you, foot, adios. Where, what happens to the hand? If the foot's gone, where does the hand go? You'd be walking on your hands uh -huh. and doing what you, you weren't ever designed to do. Uh -huh. In other words, we need the parts. That's his point. Now, verse 16, and if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, poor me, I don't have the gift of the eye, I do not belong to the body. Wait a minute. No, 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 no. If the whole body were an eye, verse 17, where would the sense of hearing be? Now, verse 19, if they were all one part, where would the body be? Drop down now to verse 25. So there should be no division in the body. Now, you know where he's going with this, don't you? It's talking about mm -hmm. the community of faith. Mm -hmm. There should be no division in the community of faith, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. Final line, if one part suffers, every part suffers with it. Hey, by the way, have you ever stubbed your toe? Your little toe. Mm -hmm. Your little toe. Mm -hmm. the, do, you, do you call it the pinky? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. You don't call it the expression. pinky over here. No, we have, but we have had that expression. Have you? Well, you, you stub your little toe. Does the whole body go on alert? Mm -hmm. Just a little tiny guy down there. But when he's suffering, do, do you suffer up here? Oh, yeah. oh, mercy. Yes, you do. When one part suffers, every part suffers. And I like this. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. What's the point? Every member of a community called church, community of faith, brings a giftedness to it. Mm. And this clubbing, pubbing idea, well, I belong to a club, I, be, I, I belong to a pub, that's fine. But, you know, joining, one of your questions, Althea said, I want to join a dance club, but I can get it all I need out of a dance club. Mm. The football club. The problem with all those communities is I go to get. I'm going to get. I, I get something out of it. But as I'm looking at this ideal, I realize it's an ideal. The community of faith belongs together in order to give. What's the difference? Getting versus giving. What's the philosophical difference? Well, if you, you, you feel better if you, well, I don't know. My personal experience is yeah. that if I'm giving, uh, I feel so much better. Um, just about myself. I don't, I, it's not a conscious thing, but I know that if I'm giving of my time, mm. uh, not necessarily of anything else in a tangible way, then I do. I feel so much better. You think Mother Teresa I, slept pretty well at night? I'm sure oh, she yeah. did. Yeah. But I think you're also developing yourself mm. in a holistic way. If you're part of a particular club, mm. not, to, not to denigrate go-karting, but just to use it as an example, you might be developing parts of your muscular body. But I don't think it's a very... It, emotionally, it might do a lot for your relationships, but actually when you're part of a church community and you're giving, mm. whatever your skill is, mm. you are developing yourself um, in, in, you know, intellectually, you're developing yourself emotionally, mm -hmm. and also your skills, you know, your mm. people skills. Have you ever watched television alone in your home? Oh, you're watching football, Darren, but alone at home. Mm. I mean, it's a great experience. Yeah, yeah I watch sports at home. Mm. But then you go down to the pub and you got a screaming house full. Mm. You know, they're, they're, that's no comparison, right? That's yeah. a laugh to go to the pub. And then you go to the stadium where there are thousands. Mm. Oh, yeah. What happens to you when you're around the masses in community yeah, like that? Yeah. What happens yeah. to you? You become energized and you... Mm. 
uh, yeah, yeah, get this feeling of belonging. You're singing the songs. You're a part yeah. of the event. Yeah. You're, you're actually could a part it, of the event. Could it be that that's what's happening mm -hmm. when the community of faith comes together every sure. weekend? Yeah. Mm -hmm. It comes together. Absolutely. Because I've been alone watching TV all week, so to speak. Mm -hmm. Me and my friendship with God. But do I? What happens to you when you get together with others who share it that? It changes lives. Yeah. You, you, you see the positive effect that it what has. About your life? What about your life? What does it do to you, Dave? Well, it, for me personally, um, when, when, when I go to church and I'm actually there involved with the yeah. programs that we have. And other people it actually, around you. It actually it makes me more enthusiastic. It makes me p more positive mm. about my life. It yeah. actually gives me the strength to know that I'm not alone in this conviction that I have mm. and that I can communicate what I do yes. have yes. with Christ yes. with, with positiveness mm. and it, all it, the time. And it can make the Bible so much more real because, yeah. you know, sometimes you read it and like you said, you know, you can dust off the pages of this yeah. ancient document, you know. But when you talk to the person sitting next to you and they say, this is what God did for me this week, you know, then yeah. it, it's suddenly practical and it's real and mm. you can't argue with people's personal experiences. Mm. I, mm. And, I haven't know. really been a serious Christian for very long. I've mm. been a Christian all my life because my parents are Christians and all this, but only in the last couple of years have I taken my Christianity seriously, and it's about going and, and so what taking it part. It's about going and taking part of a community of support. It's about getting that thing that you know I was you know dan pubbing, clubbing, whatever you know I've tried it. But it's about going to a place where people are concerned genuinely for your well-being mm. yeah. as well as theirs. But you're, they're concerned about you when you walk in that door. Mm. How was your week? Is so you are going you well? are I getting mean, something out of you. Oh, not yeah. only giving Absolutely. by being there to help others, but something's coming back into mm. you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but not just the church services. Itself. What's it probably even more important is what happens outside of that in terms mm. of relationships. Meaning? Um, well, for example, um, when I first came to London, I didn't know anybody in London, mm. and I had a, a child who was three and, and one who was one, and the house was gutted, there were hardly any floorboards, mm. and I, did, I had somebody there looking after the children. I thought, how are they going to manage all day like this? Somebody said to me, oh, there's a church sister down the road who has a nursery. Mm. went down there and said to her, she'd never seen me before, um, I wonder if um, my children could come here just in the day and I was thinking about the money and thinking it's going to cost me so much mm. to pay for two children and also pay the child manners I already had. And the church made a difference. And she said to me, well, listen, just bring the children and the child mind. I won't charge you. Mm. And that just showed to me the text that you read that said, mm. thinking of others more than yourself. Yeah. Mm. She could have seen that as a good opportunity of a few more, a few more pence, mm. but she didn't. She just gave it to me because she said, you're a Christian, I'm a Christian. Let's just mm. enjoy it together. Mm. Fact of the matter is, mm. we live in a world. We live in a society that is utterly fragmented. Yeah. Come on, guys. We can talk about all the communities till we're blue in the face, but people still go home at night, go home lonely, go home with a sense of disconnectedness. Mm -hmm. Do you long for a sense of community? Maybe you're like that Japanese man. Can you imagine a life where nobody cares, nobody misses me? You don't have to live that life anymore. Mm -hmm. There is a community near you that could be the very place where you could sense the belonging with people who will share the very same journey.